Pam Diego, and more than 11 states should be two-party consent for recording. Also, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100K before I graduate high school and every subscriber counts. So I saw this video because my friend sent it to me on TikTok and said I should make a video out of it. And then my other friend retweeted it on Twitter and it really intrigued me. As someone who's on social media a lot, I never really thought about how the random people in the back of viral TikToks are doing. Being in the background of a viral TikTok nowadays is the equivalent of most critical of being in the Hunger Games. We all know him being in that movie single-handedly carried it though, so. But with the rise of social media and everyone having a phone on them, the chances of you being caught in the crossfire of a TikTok being posted is higher than ever. But like I said at the start of this video, I think that more than the current 11 states should have two-party consent. And if you don't know what a two-party consent state is, but basically it just means you gotta have the consent from the other person to be in the recording. Okay, so the main thing that gets me really upset is when people are just recorded when they're out in public without their knowledge and then posted to tiktok without their consent and the majority of the time it's just a post with a fake caption accusing the person being recorded of doing something or saying something to the person that is recording and a majority of the time the person recording means it as a joke but it's just never really funny to be honest i'll use this video shown here as an example but we'll dig into that later by the way this is an example from the tiktok i showed earlier in the video which inspired me to make this video but this has been a very big issue with social media becoming more and more prominent every day. And I think a good example of that as well is the school sleeping pages. That trend was just all over the place, to be honest. But this trend is just when people would take a picture or record someone sleeping in their class and then post it to the account named their school's name, sleeping page. Of course, these pages weren't affiliated with the school at all, but they still named it that. And with this, there would be two problems. First of all, the kids sleeping did not give their consent to be posted to this page and basically be made fun of by the entire school. And the second point, the people in the background are caught in the crossfire as well. And sure, it can be seen as funny, but the person being posted to this page might not find it as funny as you do. And it can make the people in the backgrounds of these posts upset as well because their picture was taken without their knowledge, then posted to the account and I was actually posted to one not because I was sleeping but because the kids next to me were sleeping so I got caught in the crossfire and it didn't really upset me I thought it was really funny but others might not think it was as funny as I did also just taking pictures of people while they're sleeping is really weird but you know that's just me no but really put yourself in the shoes of someone that was randomly posted to a tiktok video where the person recording you claims that you did something you never did or you get posted drooling on yourself for the entire school to see now let's go back to the video i mentioned earlier this tiktok is someone recording a completely random person and i don't know if you realize this but that's a bit what's the word it's a bit creepy Okay, obviously it is creepy, but I don't understand how you can record someone, make up a lie about them, and then post it for potentially millions of people to see online. So let's dissect this video. The main target of the video is this guy right here, the guy in the hat, and they decided to make up a lie that the person they were recording said that they weren't able to make it to dinner because they were out of town, and the person recording just so happened to see this guy standing outside basically just implying that he lied about not being able to make it to dinner so they lied and made up a whole story about this person to them post on tiktok and the video did go pretty viral it's taken down now but it did get a lot of likes and comments imagine you get posted and you have a partner that sees the video and thinks you're cheating on them imagine seeing a tiktok that your boyfriend or girlfriend asked someone out to dinner because i'm pretty sure you wouldn't be happy lies like these can literally ruin relationships and it's wild that the people recording don't take that into consideration but this person just so happened to be picked out of the tons of other people on the street and then posted for a tiktok then the person that was recorded actually made a response to TikTok saying that none of it was true and that the comments were actually really hurtful. And I didn't even get started on the comments. You're painting this guy as like a villain in this TikTok. So of course people are going to comment some nasty things about him because they're thinking he's a liar and he stood you up on your dinner date or whatever. And that gives people the idea of, oh, this guy's a bad person. So I think it's fine to make fun of his appearance. And while I do get the idea of like, ooh, pitchforks, let's go after this guy. Let's make fun of his appearance for being a nasty person. In situations like these, it's just good to keep your mouth shut. Because look, bro didn't even do anything and is getting a ton of hate for it. And the guy in the green shirt as well. He didn't even do anything. He was just standing there and now he's getting caught in the crossfire as well. Imagine standing out in the street and someone records a TikTok of someone standing close to you makes up a story about them, and then you get roasted by association. That's wild to me. I hope the guy in the hat is doing good now though. Because if I was just chilling there and then someone recorded me without me knowing, posted it to TikTok, 
and I was getting flamed in the comments for a fake story, I'd be pretty upset as well. But wait, that kind of leads me to my next part, prank YouTubers. Now, prank YouTubers is just a whole other section, but it still does kind of tie into the point I'm trying to make. Prank YouTubers are making a comeback on YouTube, but they're not the same pranks from 10 years ago. And I don't even know if you can call some of these pranks because it's just going to Walmart and harassing random people for content. But these new wave prank YouTubers suck. From Balin Levine to, well, literally every other Danny Duncan clone on this platform. But Balin Levine is just someone I want to take as my main example. Balin Levine is a YouTuber with 3.75 million subscribers, but basically his videos consist of going to Walmart, Target, or any retail store really and just being really annoying. He'll go to the store and scream, overreact when someone tells him not to record, and he's basically just a nuisance to the people at Walmart trying to shop. Now this is where the two-party consent comes into place. Many of these people get rightfully upset when they have a camera shoved in their face, but the comments just make fun of them, and if they're a woman, they get called a Karen. Balin knows that if he goes to a place like this, he'll get a reaction out of the people there, and it'll be content. And it's just cringe, weird, annoying, disrespectful, and I mean, the list can go on. But after someone is really annoyed from this man-child shoving a camera in their face, it's then boosted for millions to see. Like, what if this video of them having an outburst in a Walmart affects their job or relationships even? Or just anything in their general life? And YouTube doesn't really do anything about it as well. So if you get posted to a video like this and you want to take the video down, the chances that it'll get taken down aren't very high. I know there are a lot of other examples I could have picked. I just kind of picked Balin because he's the first one I think of when I hear prank YouTuber. Now that's kind of the end of the prank YouTuber part, but I just need to mention the merch. And don't get me started on this merch, even though I just got myself started on the merch. All these prank YouTubers just have the same copy and paste merchandise. They're all just the motto of, ooh, drug bad, that the creator themselves clearly don't even support themselves, so. It's either that or just a copy of Virginity Rocks. Every time I see someone wearing a prank YouTuber's merch, I just cringe really hard. And I don't know how someone can walk into school wearing a hoodie that says virginity rocks as well. And I feel really bad for the teachers as well that I have to see these kids wearing these hoodies. And I know they just want to die on the inside after seeing that. But that's besides the point. Basically, all I'm trying to say is that we should have more legal protection for people that are being recorded and posted without their consent. It sucks that a majority of states don't have two-party consent and it's only the 11 out of 50 states that have it. There are ways creators can help protect the identities of the people they record. They can blur their faces and pitch their voices as well, but they either just don't care enough to do it or they don't know how to do it themselves, even though it's really easy. All you gotta do is a quick YouTube search on like a Premiere Pro tutorial, dude. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like. If you disliked it, then please still leave a like. And I'll see you guys next week, maybe. It's never a promise with me. Uh, and you can check out this video right here. Check it out. Check it out right now. Check it out right now.